Part 4. Choice. Chapter 33. Esper. Esper nursed his beer in Bacchus. Saga had urgently asked to meet up. After meeting with Palma in the airport, Esper roamed the city like a ghost, haunting new stores and establishments. He still lived in his old car, but he bought expensive things just to see what it felt like. A grand cocktail in a cave, a rare painting that he mailed to Saga, expensive rare fruits, new clothes, the works. If he didn't like it, he would just throw it away, stashing some money sticks into it. Perhaps others would enjoy their newfound luck on the streets of Gridlock. No matter how much Esper tried to forget about Mason and Milo, it kept invading his thoughts. He questioned himself. Did Mason really threaten Milo when he took the hacking job? Mason had his hand on his knife, but was that a threat? Maybe Mason was right in demanding loyalty from the people he protected and educated. Esper did not remember much from his childhood in the compound, yet he had an aversion he could not explain. Was there forgotten trauma? Was it really as bad as he made it out to be? He usually shrugged it off by buying something new. In other instances of confusion, he came to despise both Mason and the Emmers, families that justified their control over others. His frustration swung between wanting to join Mason and wanting to obliterate their control. The thought of sacrificing himself and revealing it all felt appealing. A martyr fixing his mistakes and giving back freedom to the city. Regardless of whether he wanted to join or whether he wanted to take away their control, he could only do so if he had proof of the limiter. He had requested the emails, logs, and data that Saga had from the hack, but she destroyed it, citing her fear that jail was still a possibility. After collecting their reward, Rulo and Saga went their own ways. Esper didn't want to meet up with them, really, because he didn't want to see his hand at splitting the siblings. All he knew is that Rulo got a cave and a dog, and that Saga got her penthouse's apartment. He should have been happy, but he wasn't. He was alone, and while money could buy company, it couldn't buy family. He set his beer down neatly in the one wet ring on the table as Saga sat down opposite him with a double whiskey on the rocks. Is this where you used to meet Palma and Flora? Wouldn't say it's my vibe, but I get that it appeals to the middle ground. Gentrified, yet grimy. Is Bacchus going to close after the tax increase, do you think? Yeah, it works, and I doubt it. Bacchus seems to attract yuppies who want to feel edgy. A lot of those around, Esper said. He liked Bacchus because, in trying so hard to appeal to a certain crowd, it was entirely authentic in its emptiness. The vibe was like a theme park. There was nothing behind the facade. You have urgent news for me? Yes. So, I couldn't get it out of my head. Esper, I didn't delete the records and data from the hack. I wanted to, but I couldn't get rid of the reality that the Emmers were liars. I was now living among them, and I had to prove to myself what the limiter was. I delved deeper into it and found proof. It is a limiter that manipulates the markets, and it is the Emmers. Esper perked up as Saga continued. I created a virtual container that simulated the limiter's surrounding environment. It would think it's in a real network and thus wouldn't reveal itself to the city's actual servers. Over time, I monitored the requests and eventually discovered what it was doing. During times of volatility in the telecoms infrastructure of the city, the limiter would instruct a botnet to send denial-of-service attacks against the city's routers, as expected, limiting bandwidth. The key clue here is that it also monitors the Council of Seven to time the attacks. It means it can more easily hide it. To get the final proof that it was the Emmers, I searched the email logs that Palma gave me in the first hack. I found some encrypted messages, and with decryption keys I stole from Clara's laptop, it was revealed. Clear as day, they were talking about the limiter. Your hunches were right. He had the proof he needed, and hoped that she had not subsequently destroyed it. Esper feigned curiosity, holding on to a tenuous thread of hope. Wow, amazing work. Can I see? He held his breath. Yes, Saga said as she emailed him the records. Relief washed over him. He had what he needed. Having that key slot into place was the final catalyst of his cascading descent. He could manipulate the markets using both techniques, 
But unlike Mason or the Emmers, he wouldn't. His newfound power was knowledge, the full understanding of the system and the powers at play. The only way forward was to take away control from those who sought to control. Esper had a plan. Join Mason's compound with the proof, and through that, give permission for Mason to unleash his hardware prowess on the Emmers. Not only would they destroy each other and their power, Esper would save the compound from Mason's control, steering a family towards true freedom and salvation. So where does this leave us? Saga asked. What do you want to happen? We know that Mason manipulates the markets. We know the Emmers do. I don't know. It bothers me. Only after you've made all your money. Saga coughed a bit of whiskey and frowned. Excuse me? Are you guilt tripping me? You? This entire city is just full of people who do shit for the supposed good of others and absolve themselves in the process. They justify their own individual atrocities as long as it is for the greater good. Are you saying that's what I'm doing? Nah, you're just plain selfish, wanting things at the cost of others. I'm sorry, what the hell, Esper? And you aren't all of this? I am, he said, shrugging. Isn't that shit? We're nothing special, he said, taking a sip of beer. I say we put an end to this, all of it. Take away control from those who want to control us. Saga shuffled a bit uneasily. What do you mean? Screw Mason. Screw the Emmers. We screw them both. The city deserves to know. Esper, what do you mean? Like, practically? Whatever it takes. Stop talking like this. Do you want to kill them? They've killed so many people already through their thinly veiled veneers of being good people. If you manipulate a market, down the line, someone will get screwed over. Saga shifted uncomfortably in her seat. I don't know what you're thinking, but whatever is going on, Esper, you need help. That's right, I can't do this alone. Esper, I meant it. Get help. Stop it with this shit. Why did you tell me about the limiter? Saga paused for a moment. Esper continued. See? Aha, you do despise them. I do, and we were a part of it, giving that power to Mason. For what end? Money? The entire city is rotten. Then I don't understand. Let's make it right. That's what you want, no? I'm not going to kill people, Esper, Saga said, suddenly downing the rest of her whiskey. In fact, I don't know why I came to you. You were the cause of all of this. Don't be stupid. She stood and left into the city. You were the cause of all this. Saga was right. It was his burden to fix. Before he would go back to the compound, he had to take his own medicine. The only things Esper had control over was his car, with a few possessions he did not care for anymore, his money, and himself. He lowered the always-on-sale price on his car, and it was snapped up immediately. The money he would bring to Mason. As for himself, Esper had never been one for drugs, precisely because he didn't like losing control. He thus knew what he had to do in order to let go. Ego death. He stumbled back into the trunks and threw a tiny piece of blotter paper on his tongue. In the subsequent hours, he lost control to the vivid, swimming colors of the evening and the hovering nomad orchestra of the city next to his ears. He walked everywhere and nowhere, seeing colors that existed in between colors and hearing all the city's conversations as whispers. As it progressed, first resisting, wrestling with his cap for hours, and then finally letting go, the city's gridlock rose up around him into a fractal dream. Transactions and cryptography pulsing like clockwork to the random numbers. And then, nothing. The shiny white exterior of Mason's compound reflected his new self. He was in a dapper white suit without his cap. It was lost in his pilgrimage to ego death. Esper stretched his neck and told the guard to let Mason know that he had the information Mason needed. A few moments later, the guard let him in. Mason, sitting at his desk, was still disheveled. He corrected himself and stood. Esper, glad you came back. Look at you all dapper in your white suit. Please, sit. No need to stand, Esper said. I have the proof you need, and I have a plan. Tell me, Mason said, almost shouting. I will tell you what you want to hear. It's the truth. That truth, however, has made me realize the importance of what you've always been saying. I want to help you. I can offer you the truth, and then I can offer my expertise. 
After all we've been through, I know you can't trust me. I will execute my plan regardless. It's up to you if you want to join me, Esper said. Both of them now needed each other, but Esper kept up the bluff to retain power. Mason nodded. Go on. First, the truth. The limiter in the Mech Institute servers is a tool used to slow down bandwidth in the public car markets to the benefit of the Emmers. They have been using this tool for decades to manipulate people and the markets. People like me, people like you. This is a reason why they've kept control and power, Esper said as he slipped the proof on a memory card towards Mason. The proof is on there. Mason shoved himself back in his chair, a mixture of emotion in between excitement and anger. I knew it. Have you seen the mid-levels, Esper? Have you seen what they did? This is that power. Destroying what we've done for this city. Destroying what's right for this city. The temerity, Mason, Esper interrupted. Mason calmed down. Listen, I have a plan. Don't you think it's time that the city knew about the Emmers? I will get them to tell the truth, to come clean. And I know when, where, and how. I know, however, that this isn't my story. You have suffered for the trunks and suffered for this city. It's up to you if you want to join me. Mason massaged his temples. How can I trust you? What choice do you have? 